Today we're going to run through my ultra lightweight backpack setup. Currently it's weighing in at about just under five and a half kilograms, which is about 12 pounds. So let's get to it. do is I'll just show you the pack. It's the z Pax Arc Zip. On the outside I've got my Z-Lite Thermarest 3 quarter length pad which I couple up with an inflatable one. My umbrella on the outside. I keep various things in the pockets so I'm just actually going to show you what's inside my pack. So I'll lay it out and we'll go over it bit by bit. So here's the full layout here. To start with my rucksack is the z Pax Arc Zip and I've basically got everything on it. There's the mesh side pouches, the hip belt pouches, the shoulder pouches. I've got the shoulder padding, the lumbar padding down here. I've basically added almost everything. Oh, sorry, Moss. Next up, depending on where I'm going, which goes down the outside, ultra lightweight hiking backpack umbrella. It weighs hardly anything. Keeps the rain off your face, which can be quite oppressive if it's raining all the time, especially here in Scotland. And it's also got the solar reflective coating on it. So that's, that helps with getting a bit of shade from the sun. Here's the Thermarest Z Light, which I use in conjunction with my inflatable sleeping mat. And on the and inside the tent. I left this outside, but normally I stick that underneath it because it's grippy and it stops it sliding, but I didn't do it last night. Yeah, I've just lifted the sleeping mat and it's soaked. Because you can see I've set it so the fly's really low, but my feet's basically pushed right out underneath that and allowed the water to come in. And I also use this as a, like a sit mat if I stop for a break or anything. Moving on up, there is my z Pax Duplex which is in camo, but I've got it in a normal sized, I think it's a medium Z-Pack stuff sack because I can basically push it into a flatter shape and this slides into the front here along with a Z-Pack ground sheet. Now I basically use that as a ground sheet the least. I'll wrap it around my waist and I secure it with a hip belt as like a rain skirt. I'll put it over my head, I'll put it over a moss. Just put the ground sheet over the rucksack and moss just now, just to keep any of the light drizzly rain off. I use it for everything. It probably gets used as a ground sheet the least, but it can be used as a ground sheet, of course, if the ground's dodgy. Here is a safety pin. I use that to attach to the mesh at the outside of my rucksack or somewhere on it, one of the bits here, and I hang my wet socks off of that. I'll get to that in, in turn though, because I tend to wear a pair of socks and pants one day, wash them in the burn, and then hang the wash pair on the outside the next day to dry, and put in my other pair, which is also my sleeping pair. So, oh! Ah! Oh, pants! Next up, we have eight shepherd stakes, titanium shepherd stakes and a Z-Pack stuff sack, and in there are also two steel ones, which hold up either end with the trekking pole ends, of my duplex, if it's really rocky or stony, I can batter those steel ones in. The ground here is really, really rocky, and I've wrecked a couple of tent pegs, especially these lightweight titanium t tent pegs, putting them into the ground. So we've had to use a couple of rocks to actually batter them in, and titanium being sort of, what's it like? Hard, isn't it? Really hard. Yeah. yeah. A smidge midgey head net, a black diamond head torch, a Z-Pax rain cover, and that also protects the Z-Pax rucksack from abrasion. If you're pushing through any trees or anything like that, just put that on, it stops your anything like this snagging or it getting ripped up. Rather, rather that, because you can replace that easily than your good rucksack. I have some like antibacterial, viral, fungal spray, a hand wash. I got this years ago. It's a good pump dispenser and I just refill it. A sun protection stick that I use in my face. My Noc Vecto water bladder that I use in conjunction with the Hydra Blue VersaFlow water, inline water filter, which I found to have a much better flow rate than the Sawyer and it's more functional. I'm going to be doing a review on that separately, so check out the channel if you want to see that. And then down here's a spare stuff sack. Up here, moving on up, I have 
my BRS ultralight stove, it's like 13 quid from China. Now I'll put links to all of this kit in the description, so if you're wanting to look at any of this stuff, it's down there. Alp kit titanium mug, an Optimus spoon, and if you look at this, it's titanium and it's got the matte finish for the bit that you hold, but it's got a polished end and I find that much more pleasant to eat from than the likes of this. Uh, so yeah, I find that it's a much, because it's deep you can get into like your mountain house or adventure food packets, but that surface makes it much nicer to eat from than just like a normal titanium one. I have a toiletry bag that's made by a guy in the UK. He makes uh, all sorts of ultralight stuff out of Cuban fiber. Uh, Tread Light is his name. I'll, I'll link some of his stuff up. Well, I'll link his website down below. That stuff go is my toilet goes in my toiletry bag. This is a simple medical kit, and this lives in the outside in one of the side pockets. It's a juice of spades trowel for digging cat holes to do a number two in. Spent a wee while with my little juice of spades potty trowel. <laughs> With a toilet roll and I stick that inside to protect and I put this inside the pouch and that goes in the outside and it stops that puncture and anything. Then moving down I've got my ditty bag, odds and ends bag. So I've got a charger for my power bank. I've got, this is actually a light, don't have any batteries in it but it clips over your phone, the forward facing cam camera on your phone. So if you're ever vlogging inside the tent at night you can use this. Uh, I found that to be quite good. And this this is a little bag that I keep inside the ditty bag of stuff that I don't use so much. So it's a dog whistle if moss goes amiss. It's a, like an airplane eye number, you know, you put that over your eyes. And earplugs, that's if I'm ever in a campsite, it can get noisy with people drinking and such. And if you're going to bed kind of early, pop that on, put pop the earbuds in and you'll get away to sleep no problem. A little Swiss army knife, pretty cool, I like this. A dude looking out a tent up at a mountain, and on the other side, that's them going up to some at the mountain. And this is just for some other accessories related to filming. SD cards, things for my tripod and things like that. Then I have a pair of homemade flip-flops that is basically my ultra trail running shoe insoles with some string attached. I just burst it and then pushed the string through and melted the ends. And that's if I'm going in the showers in any campsites. You don't want to be picking up verrucas or any smelly stuff. So that's what I use. They weigh nothing, so they go in quite handy. Especially if you're putting different insoles in. They like super feet insoles like this. That's my winter ultra trail runners. And then a Z-Pax travel bag that I keep my phone in. My S7. That goes in there nicely. And the other side I keep my bank cards. That's waterproof. You can put it around your neck pretty handy. Moving back up, inside my toiletry bag I meant to say I've got a couple of little towels that I keep in there. Then I've got my sleeping system, which is a Thermarest quilt, rated down to like zero degrees. A Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer down jacket, which is hoodless, because I find it quite flexible using that in conjunction with my z packs hood that I can sleep in, because that, doesn't have a, that, that quilt doesn't have a hood on it, so I can use that. Couple of down booties, because I get cold feet when I sleep. Trekology inflatable pillow. And in conjunction with this, I use this Alp kit cloud base inflatable sleeping mat. It's really lightweight, it's, I think it's more lightweight. It only costs like 40 quid or something. And it's I think it's more lightweight than the Thermarest ones. And it's, it's like, it's really long and nice shape. But there's no, it's got no insulative properties at all, so I like to couple it with this, and it stops it sliding about inside my duplex. Outdoor Research Helium 2 rain jacket, raid light mitts, waterproof mitts that go, that can I can just put them on or I can put them over my gloves, which are just these OEX ones with like the grippy stuff on them. My Z Packs beanie. If it's warm, sunny, protect your hands when you're using trekking poles like I do with outdoor research, active ice sun gloves. Putting these on, your, your, your hands actually do feel colder. And when it's midgy season, you put your head net on, you put those gloves on, I wear shirts, so I roll the shirt down, and I find that midges don't go on the tips of your fingers for some reason. So with my hat, my 
head net, my gloves, my long sleeve shirt, and my trousers, I'm basically midge proof without. I basically don't carry any midge or insect repellent now, because I find this to you know this barrier to be more effective. I also carry seal skin socks, depending on the weather or the trail. But I find that even if my feet get wet, I can hike in. If I don't know if you ever hiked in wet socks, sometimes the material, the cotton, if they're not clean, it can go pretty abrasive. But I found that I can hike for days and days and days in seal skins and not get any blisters. And if it's if it's colder out and wet out, they keep your feet. It, it's kind of like a wetsuit where it keeps the your feet warm. So I like to carry them, but not always. And then I have my sleeping clothes, which is basically my spare pair. So I've got merino like spandex blend pants, basically. I've got two pairs of these, one pair I wear, like I said, one pair that I sleep in that are clean. And then the next day, the pair I've slept in, I hike in, the pair that from the day before I wash in conjunction with whatever socks I've got. And then I hang the washed socks and pants on the outside of my rucksack to dry with a safety pin when I'm hiking and then that way I switch into them after my hike out of my sweaty stuff into my clean dry stuff for sleeping. I use a pair of Under Armour shorts. Now I sleep in them uh, with a pair with like with my boots and this top here which is I weighed it and it's like really really light and it's like a thermal top weatherproof heat whatever don't know I, I got it as a present so I have that so that's like my sleep system and my rotation clean clothes system and all that all these stuff go in these medium stuff sacks by cuban fiber stuff sacks roll top by z packs so they're waterproof and when you've got these so you can see i've got this one for my sleeping clothes i've got a large one for my this goes in there for my sleeping bag all this stuff goes in one of those and all this stuff goes in one of a, a small ditty bag and then this stuff basically lives in the outside of my rucksack so that goes in the upper mesh side pouches this goes in the front mesh of the shoulder straps and these go in various pouches about and these items go inside the outside in addition to that that's not including my base weight is my z packs food bag which just sits on the top. I've got a Swiss Army knife multi-tool that I tend to keep in my pocket on a lanyard, so I don't include that in the base weight. My GPS, which I don't always bring, like if I'm doing the West Highland Way or something, that's optional, that's why I don't include it, but I quite like it for keeping track of my miles covered. A small tripod, a watch, and an anchor solar charger. Now I do have a bigger anchor charger, if it's summer though, I'll, or, or I'm staying at campsites a lot, I might just take this, you get about three days charge out of this for your phone. Or I might take this and that together and I'll use that to top up this plus any devices. Or I'll take a big anchor charger, I'm actually using it just now. But I'll take this big, this big chap. So that's 10,000 and this one's 26,800. Now that, that's lasted me like the full of the sky trail. Between these three items, I've been away, I can do trips from day trips up to like 14, 15 day trips uh, with a combination of these and keep myself going. So this is basically what all that stuff looks like packed up. The sleeping bag, down jacket, and sleeping mat go at the bottom of the pack. Then goes all my miscellaneous stuff like cook system, first aid kit, the ditty bag, pot, everything else is in there. And then here is all my clothing. So if I need to get access to like my rain stuff, etc., that's all sitting at the top of the pack. This over here is the z Packs travel case for their rucksack line. It's got a grab handle on it. It's a thicker DCF. And basically when I've got everything packed up, apart from my down, I take that out to fluff it up. But everything else gets packed in the bag, put in here to protect it and for easy transport. And if I'm ever going abroad or anything, that's where it gets shipped in. And yeah, this just keeps, the, keeps it good. So I'll pack this stuff up and I'll show you how much extra space I've got in there. 
This is us now packed, got all the stuff inside it. Tent, ground sheet, tent, ground sheet, and there. Tent pegs in the middle of the ground sheet, rain bag cover, and as you can see, I've still got plenty of space up there. Could put some odds and ends in there. Most of the stuff like the trowel, the little bag with the trowel and the toilet roll in it would go in these side pockets, and the likes of my water filter, I just stick in the middle of the bladder and put some elastic bands and that just goes on the side. If it tends to be raining on and off, I'll also like stick my rain jacket in there. It's big enough to hold that outdoor research rain jacket folded up. And I've still got loads of other space for snacks and all the rest. And if you look here, you'll see that I've got tons of space for my food bag. You know, even with that in there, I've still got loads of room. Of course, that's maybe just, that's probably a couple of days, two or three days worth of food there. And then once you've folded this up, I've got the side clip so I can fold it down, or you can just clip it together. But you've also got these, so I had the V-strap. Normally there's like a single strap from there that clips onto here. I They send you that as well, but I ordered the V-strap and you can see you know, even if you wanted, you could keep your food bag or whatever on the outside on the top. Uh, it's pretty long because this, this, this rolls up a lot and it's designed to take a bear canister up there. So yeah, that's it. There's still space in here for stuff. There's a couple of tabs here and they give you a little carabiner to keep to stop the any stress getting put on that buckle. But you can use like a little padlock instead stop anyone getting into it in the airport it's a bit of a tight fit when it's all jammed up but what they say is don't you know overstuff your rucksack and you know fill these looser bits and you can see there's still plenty at the top but i, I can basically jam pack the rucksack in while what little bit of wiggling get it all in